Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. Quick story, you know, I lived here my whole life and while everybody's cutting all the trees down and everything, I keep planting new now, ones. I've never been a fan of living in the city, but uh, whenever I can, I try and just make it as country as possible. And when I was a kid, I used to hear the crickets at night and it was a wonderful sound. I used to love to hear them at and night. And then I started working nights for 16 years. I was working midnights and uh, when I would come home in the middle of the night, it would be, uh, you know, I would hear the crickets. That was the only company I had. But then we had two bad winters back to back and the crickets were gone. I didn't hear anymore. So I started buying crickets and uh, replacing the ones that had I go passed. I my local Petco and I buy them, uh, a bag of them, you can see here. And they're in there and they run about 16 cents a piece. And I just plant them, I bought about 20. And I'll plant them around the property and sure enough tonight and the day after you'll hear some beautiful cricket songs at night. It's just a wonderful experience here. I guess you take it for granted if you live upstate or something and you have them all over the place. But you know, if you if there if it's a quiet night, you start okay, to miss real them. quickly. I bought these. Uh, I did a review on these already on the channel, but I, I'm bringing them upstairs. And I just for some of the new subscribers that didn't see these. I just uh, just want to throw these out there, see what you thought of them. Uh, this is a metric set, and I bought it specifically for metric, but um, it, what it is, it's an offset combination wrench. And uh, you can see here how this works. That And it has a nice case with that closed cell foam. And you can see here, it's a regular wrench up here. It's got that brush finish. And over here, it's got your combination. But you see how that is? But here's the interesting thing, you see? that they're offset to each other. So when you're using a combination, you get a flat to put against. So let me show you how that works on the wrench tester. Now these tools are marketed by the Astro Pneumatic Tool Company, but uh, the design, like I said, it's it's very unusual as, uh, in a certain way. Now you know here it has a 15 degree offset at the end. Now for those of you that don't know why sometimes there's an offset, if you have to get into a tight area now, here it is, I'm gonna show you, we'll put in a couple of, of nails into these holes here to make believe here's a, a slight, a tight area to get into. Now, uh, if if you had to use the wrench to get into there to uh, to tighten or to loosen it, you know, you would use this offset, go all the way to one side. Now you could see I can't engage the wrench here like this, but by flipping it, I can engage the wrench the to the nut, and uh, that's why there's an offset. So you can work your way back and forth and be able to work within small confined areas. One other neat feature of this wrench here, this is a, a standard combination wrench. Craftsman, you can see when I put here, I am pushing on the thin side of the wrench. This is the thin side. So either I'm pulling or pushing on the thin side of the wrench, which, you know, doesn't give you a lot of comfort here because, you know, you're wrapping around the thin side. However, with the with this design wrench here, you can see when we put this on, we engage it. Now I have a flat side that I'm engaging, okay? So if I'm pulling here or pushing, uh, it's more comfortable because it's a flat side, you see? So that's uh, pretty interesting. And this isn't a new idea by any means. You know, years ago, mechanics used to heat up the middle of their torch and give them a half a turn, but I just uh, I just like the design and I bought these a, a long time ago. So I'm bringing them upstairs. I just thought maybe you'd like to take a look and if you've never seen how these work, pretty interesting wrench. Okay, next up, a lot of people uh, were commenting that they liked a little uh, centering tool. So let me show you another tool that's really easy and, and every shop should now, have. Now, so many times if you're in a shop and you want to cut a piece of wood, you know, you grab a piece of wood like this and you put it on the side of your bench and, you know, it, it wobbles a little bit. It's hard to hold steady. No matter how hard you hold down, it, it tends to move. And then you could use the clamping method where, you know, you clamp one end here and then you clamp another end on this side further down. And that works. You know, that'll make it a little bit steadier so that you can cut it. But it's just, I got a tool that'll save you so much. Here it is. This goes back 150 years probably. Uh, not this one. I mean this design. Now, all it is, it's a piece of wood. It could be any width, any length, but it's basically a Z. You take a, a small uh, board, a, a furring strip or something like that. and you, I glued and screwed it you know, and countersunk so these don't stick up. But you can see here that that's on here on one side and you do the same thing on the other side. And it's it comes out like a Z and that's it. And how it works, super, super simple. Uh, you have the edge of your bench here. All you do is you take this, falls over the edge 
And that's, and you Now the done. beauty of this is anytime you want to cut a piece of wood, you take the wood over here, you just put it. Now, as I push against the edge of the bench here, that locks that piece of wood into this corner here so I can easily cut off that piece of wood. I can uh, use it with a, a two by three, a two by four. This is gonna grip whatever you hold. So that's what makes it really interesting. So as you can see, this is really a, a tool that everybody should have and uh, works like a charm and you could use it anywhere. Uh, do you ever have one of those days, you know, the kind of days when, when nothing goes right? Well, check this out. I was having one of those days. Buddy Scout Crafty here. We're on a little bit of a road trip and we're having a good... <laughs> Sorry. Are you okay? What the hell is your problem? Okay, if you haven't figured it out by now, I guess you're in, you know you're in the middle of a mishmash Monday. I mean, we do have a big mosh today, but uh, uh, one of the subscribers had asked me about uh, the fluids I have in the background. You see behind me, you know, they were saying, "Wow, you got a lot of chemicals up there," you know, and maybe you can talk about what it is. And and uh, I wanted to go over what the difference between a cutting fluid. And a oil is. Let's now, go when you that. look up here, you'll see a lot of these are lubricating oils, but some of them are cutting fluids. And there's a huge difference. You know, a lot of times you'll want to uh, grab whatever you have, but let me tell you some of the, the differences you should know now, about. Now, on the right here, we have what's known as a lubricating oil. And you can see it right here, multi-purpose oil. On the left, we have a cutting fluid. And a lot of people tend to call this a cutting oil because it resembles oil or whatever, but these are two different animals. And it's very important to realize that because uh, if you try and use one where you should use the other, you're going to run into now, problems. the sole purpose of a lubricating oil is when you put a, a, a small section of oil onto a piece of metal and you take another piece of metal, uh, the idea of a lubricating oil is to put a small film of oil to keep it from touching, to keep these two items from wearing on each other. So when you go back and forth like this, you will, you can go back and forth like this, and as long as that oil is there and it's doing its job, it will not wear or take away from either one of these metals. Now, if the lubricating oil was doing its job, when I wipe this off, it should be pretty much clear. You see, you don't have too much here. We'll wipe the top of this off here, and you can see it's clear. We have just oil remaining, okay? Now, that's because there was a thin layer of oil between this and this, stopping friction. Now, if we perform the same test using cutting fluid, just put a couple drops there like that, and we'll rub this back and forth like this, just a couple times. Now, the cutting fluid should uh, promote uh, actual wear on here because the cutting fluid is not a lubricant. So let's take a look at what it looks like now. Now we'll take a piece of paper towel here, wipe the bottom of this, and already you could see it's a little bit darker. We'll wipe this here. And okay, now you see, you see the difference? Now we, that's little microscopic particles from the metals because I was using a uh, cutting fluid instead of a lubricating film. Now, when you use the right cutting oil uh, or cutting fluid, as it should be called, uh, what happens is not only does it help uh, the tip grab the metal and uh, you see these little flutes here, well, the uh, chips that come off of the cut, will it, the oil will help it follow up the flutes and you can see how that works. Now, the reason that went so well is because that cutting fluid helped this chip evacuate from the hole and climb right up the flutes like you wanted to. That's two of the reasons, one for cooling, one for lubricating the, the actual tool. Now, depending on the metal that you're going to drill through, you, you would use a different type of fluid. Uh, for brass and for cast iron, you really don't need a cutting fluid because they're what's called free machining. If you see, the chips come out like sand almost. So you don't need cutting fluid for these two materials. However, for steel, obviously, you do need a, a good cutting fluid. 
Um, aluminum is another one. Aluminum, especially, you would think not, but aluminum uh, galls up, tends to, it will actually weld itself to the tip of your drill bit or cutting tool. And um, one of the surprising good uh, cutting oils or cutting fluids for aluminum is WD-40. That works really good. But you can also use kerosene. You can use a bunch of different things. Now, there are basically two types of cutting fluids. There's oil-based and uh, this is a, a water-based. They call it a soluble oil, but it's a water-based. And when you, you just mix a little bit of this with some water and the consistency comes out, you can see like that. It comes out like a milky white substance. Now, that's better for cooling than it is for uh, cutting, lubricating, because for that, this works much better. Like you wouldn't use this for tapping, but this is fantastic for tapping because it's like an oil-based substance. So there's a whole uh, array of different cutting fluids and oils you can use. But it's very interesting. Just stay away from the regular lubricating oils. So thanks very much for tuning in for today's Mosh. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, by the way, the crickets. Okay, it's midnight out here. And uh, if you listen close, you could hear them. I guess they're glad to be free.